if I ask you to kind of show your method here, I know that some of you might just say 27 times 2 is 54. That's how much it's going to cost. There's nothing wrong with that kind of thinking. But I want to show you how you can set up a proportion for when it doesn't work out so nicely. I, I don't need to see this kind of arithmetic. I know you know how to multiply 27 by 2. If you set up a proportion, here's a, this is what a proportion is. Okay, It's a comparison of two things like that. Two rates or two ratios. I'm going to put the words here first because I have to decide what's going to go on the top of my rates or ratios. On the top, I'm going to put the cost. And on the bottom, I'm going to put the number of rolls, right? That's just that's just me reminding, like putting that down so I don't write one of them upside down. So what I'm saying is $27 over 5 rolls. That's equal to... What's the unknown here? Which thing's unknown? Like, which is the cost unknown or the number of rolls? The cost is unknown. I'm going to call it X. What I should do before I use, uh, it's it's really rude to start using a, a variable without actually introducing that variable. You know, like if you have a friend and you you go somewhere else and talk to some other friend, it's kind of rude to just go in there and not introduce your friend. So you should introduce your variable if you just suddenly there's no X in the question. You got to introduce it, and here's how you introduce a variable. You say, you, no, you don't say, let me introduce you to x. This is my friend x. You just say, let x equal what it's going to equal. Let x equal the cost of 10 rolls. Okay? Now I'm getting mixed up here. I'm getting jamming it all together, so I should spread this out nicely so that that's going to, oh, I missed that. There, okay? If you're gonna if you're gonna use a variable, you should say what the variable is. If you're gonna start to use a variable, and on the bottom, then I can put ten rolls. If you want to figure out how you can figure out that x, we have to look at this and say how many times bigger is that? It is two times bigger, so we got to do the same thing there. Okay, that's enough. Like that's enough to show me that you know what you're doing. You don't have to then say 27 times 2. This is this is sort of, when did you learn to do that skill? What grade? Grade 3 or something, right? By the time we're at grade 8 now, I don't need to see this. I know you know how to do that. You don't have to show me the arithmetic. You do have to show me the grade 8 thinking. This is the grade 8 thinking. This is the logic that we're using in grade 8, the setting up of a proportion. And then, of course, it is $54, right? The reason that I want you to do this is because then if we said, now, how much should, what was the number that we weren't going to use? Yeah, something weird like that, right? How much should 17.2 rolls cost? <laughs> you can't buy, you can't, you can't buy 0.2 of a roll, but you could set up a proportion like this, right? How much should it cost? You can use the exact same proportion. You can use it exactly the same, so I am going to even just take this. No, I better write it out again because I'll make you feel bad because you have to write it out again. Remember, we're doing cost over rolls, right? Cost, rolls. 27 is, this is the known ratio that we're using here. 27 over 5 rolls equals, which way do I set this up now? Where's the, where's the unknown here? What's the unknown? Yeah, now can I use the same thing here? Can I use an X again? No, I, I already called X something else, so I'm actually going to use a different letter here. Now I'm going to say let you use whatever letter you want, other than it's not good to use O because it looks like a zero and capital I because it ends up looking like a one, but I'm going to be boring and use Y. Let Y be the... Cost of 17.2 rolls. Okay. Where does the Y go? Does it go on the top here? Does it go on the bottom? How do you know it goes on the top? How come? Yeah, because you were good enough to write down this. Why do you think I'm making such a big deal about writing this when I teach grade 8? 
I've taught grade 8 before. I know you're probably different than all the grade 8s I've ever taught. But what do you think lots of grade 8s make mistakes on? Yeah, they forget which one's which. They don't put this down. They don't put this down. They don't put this down. And they just throw the Y somewhere, right? And they end up putting it in the wrong place. Make sure if, if you're, uh, if you're putting the cost on the top, it's always got to be on the top, right? And then on the bottom here, then we got to put 17.2 rolls. I know that's the silly thing because you can't really buy 0.2 of a roll. But if you could, we can figure it out, okay? How many times bigger is that? Well, you you have to you can't figure that out in your head, but you can you can certainly divide it and find out, right? Get your calculator and divide it and find out. You can figure out how much how much bigger that is. What do I need to do? I don't need to do that. What do I need to do here? 17.2 divided by 5. It's a number like that, right? 3.44. Since it's not a big long decimal, I can write the whole thing down, right? This is times 3.44. Then I got to do this, right? Times 3.44. So if you do, and, and again, you, you know, I mean, you can, you, you're welcome to use your calculator. I don't need to see the arithmetic. I need to see the proportion that you set up because that's the, that's the math in it. It's not the arithmetic. There's kind of a difference between arithmetic and math, I would say. 3.44 times 27 is that much. $92.88 for our really expensive tape that we're buying part of a roll. 92. If you wanted, you could write down the, the arithmetic you did. I mean, you could say you could say 17.2 divided by 5, and then that answer times. 27, right? If you wanted to do that, you could. You could say y is equal to 17.2 divided by 5 and then times 27. If you want to do that, you can, and you could say that it's 92.88. And then you should actually answer the question, which is $92.88. Are we okay with that? I hope. I want you to set, be able to set up a proportion for things. If I talk about setting up a proportion, it means making a comparison of ratios like this. I know now that I've said this, there's still going to be people that when I ask you to solve this by setting up a proportion, you're still going to just say 17.2 times this equals, and there's your answer. You have to know how to set up a proportion. We're not just interested in the answer here. We're interested in the method. Because math you learn later on builds on understanding that concept. The concept you're learning here is how to say this thing over this thing equals this thing over this thing and knowing how to make the comparison like this. Later on, we're going to look at a different way to find this y value. Once we've done some more equation solving, we're going to look at, I, I mean, this is one way to do it is just to compare this and this. There's other ways to solve that proportion. Is there any questions about this? What you need to do is go here. We're, for this section, we're not going to do the explore. But I do want you to read the examples that they have there. This is very similar to what we just did. I, I want you to do the show you no questions. Do this by setting up a proportion. Okay, do this by writing a proportion. And more importantly here, I guess, is this one. Do that one by setting up a proportion. Show me that you know what, what we just talked about. Once you're done with that, the last part in your notes is the is uh, this stuff. Make sure you can explain what the difference between those three words are, ratio, rate, and proportion. Um, yeah. 
And then after that, we can work on the, start to do some of the check your understanding. You have to look at your list.